there's no way you have to hold back your curiosity. Mm. I think this is what leads you to learn, to discover, to open your mind, and then just become a better version of yourself. This podcast encourages and empowers you to create your own unique real story, develop your own unique real statement, and discover your own unique real self. The power is yours. Good afternoon, good afternoon, Fabian Raphael. Previously, episode 31 of the 12 Minute Convos podcast. It's been just three years, six months, eight days, three hours, 15 minutes since we last recorded that conversation. But if you want to attract something good in your life, well, and you've not done the cleaning up of what's going on in your mind or in your life, well, you can never make some room for that success. That was then. This is now. What are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? Yes, I'm excellent. Excellent as can be. I'm really glad we've connected. I think I've not spoken with anyone that long. It's like almost four years, Fabian. Like you were on the podcast like way, way back then. Uh, oh yeah, when you were starting out, like my yeah. God, I'll don't go more listen than to the two thousand episode. episodes before. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, like, what's going on? What's new? You were into, like, so marketing to crush your competitors' podcast was out, right? Mm -hmm. And you were doing some interviews that were remarkably recorded, like, to perfection with conversations that were longer than mine by five times, right? How have things evolved? Oh, actually, marketing to crush your competitors went until 300 episodes, and then I stopped marketing to crush your competitors. So I was happy to have interviewed a lot of influencers on this podcast and share a lot of expertise and stuff for anyone who wanted to start an online business. Mm. But I felt, I think it was last, yeah, it was this year or at the end of last year, I decided to stop that podcast because it doesn't represent anymore my brand or what I'm doing. So right now I'm working more with aspiring coaches and coaches to help them become highly paid experts. And I didn't put a total end to podcasting, but I feel that if I start a new podcast, it will be more towards coaches and hearing stories of people that went from being in the corporate or, you know, having a job and then switching to being a full-time entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So I'm very grateful for that journey, for that podcast made me meet so many people from mm -hmm. all around the world. And I learned so much with it. And I discovered I was very passionate about building relationships and learning from others and also sharing my value with my audience. But it was time for me to switch that chapter into a new one. And that's great. I think when we spoke, it was like you were at episode 200. But what was really cool as well is that you were meeting people. Like that's something you were one of the early adopters of that, right? Like meeting people physically that were on the podcast. Is that accurate? Mm, I was not recording necessarily live, like let's say meeting people. But what I meant was, yeah, I would definitely invite people over. Let's say if I had oh, attended no, a live sorry. Event. Oh, so you didn't just like, you weren't meeting people like traveling and meeting people sometimes because of your travels? Didn't that happen? Or am I wrong about that? No, you're wrong about that. Okay. okay. <laughs> so what I would do, let's say if I attend a live event and I meet a speaker or I meet someone that would be a great fit for my podcast, of course, I would invite them over to my podcast oh. and then it would be easier to get a yes. Of course, okay. if I was, you know, face to face with a person. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's okay. I'm just healing over the, I was wrong about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. No, curiosity what? is something that was core to who you are, right? Like, how has that helped you over the last three years, that curiosity? It's something that we need to control sometimes, would you say? Or is it something that you let loose? Oh, I think it's something that I let loose, really. What really fuels me is actually being around others and those type of conversations that we're having right now, like very natural and, and to see where it leads us. 
let's say the whole time that I've been online, it's been about relationships, building them, nurturing them. And it led to many great friendships, collaborations, clients, you know, really digging into what I really want to accomplish with my business and who I want to serve. So I would say that my curiosity actually helped me grow and evolve as a person, but also as a business owner. And I would say that yeah, for anyone listening, there's no way you have to hold back your curiosity. I mm. think this is what leads you to learn, to discover, to open your mind, and then just become a better version of yourself. So, mm. of course, I don't want to hold that back ever. From the success that you had with the podcast, from the perspective of everything that went with learning and growing and consistency and habits and everything that you learn, the people that are coming on who are coaches, who want to learn how to grow their business is one of the things that you're suggesting they do be uh, creating a podcast. Yes, if it fits with who they are and if it fits with the strategy that they have to lay out for their business, of course, I would definitely suggest that. But most of the time when people are getting started, what they want is to be featured on other podcasts. Then it helps them to gain visibility, to expand their reach, to talk to other audiences and maybe build theirs. And at a certain point when they want to start theirs, well, it's easier because they already have people that heard them somewhere else. And it's also good for their reputation and the trust that they get among their audience when they're building their own stuff. Mm. Community seems to be something that infected you, if you would, from a very tender age, your grandmother being that person who really helped and influenced your life. Uh, how has what you've been doing influenced your daughter? Hmm. Well, I don't have a daughter. I have two sons. Oh, so wow. So, all right. So let me pull back. I'd have one child. That you told me you had, right? So that means you had a second child in between this piece of time we spoke, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a 15-year-old and a two-year-old, two boys, a so no wow. daughter. And let's say they both need me, but not for the same stuff. <laughs> <laughs> So how is what you've been doing like affected them? How are they catching on? You know, they say more is caught than taught, right? Um, well, how it's been, I know with my oldest, what he really enjoys is seeing me and my life partner doing what we're passionate about and what we love and having our own schedule and being able to manage the time we want to spend with him. We had that serious conversation maybe like two, three weeks ago, and he told us, he was like, well, I see that what you do is different than the average amount of people, and it inspires him. We'll see what happens with him when he takes that decision of either like going for higher education and going for a job or not wanting to go for a job and being his own boss and starting his business and all that stuff. We'll see what happens with it. But I'm glad that he got a chance to see what it's like to have parents that could actually, let's say, if he forgets his lunch at home at the middle of the day that are available to go and bring it to school. Simple thing like that and for the little one it's funny because I was telling you before he's been dropping my mic so many times because <laughs> he's seen me talking on that mic and he comes to it and he sings on it <laughs> it's so funny but I don't know like I guess for them you know that also as a parent kids learn from what they see not necessarily from what you tell them yes. you could tell them stuff and if you don't act on what you're saying well, they'll still get what you're doing, not what you said. So it's good when what you said fits what you're doing. And I'm hopeful that it will be a great example and that it will leave a great legacy for them in the choices that they want to do in life later when it's time. And your parents, yeah, like they were like the nine to five folks, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so you didn't have that as an example. In my family, I'm the only entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any of that example. So yeah, it's something because it's different. And my life partner actually inspired me to into it. And I'm grateful for that also because I didn't know it would be something that I would so enjoy <laughs> and do. Yeah. That's wonderful. Now, there's a conversation we've been opening up, the conversation of death. It is possible, right? You could die today or tomorrow. Now, many people do not entertain that conversation, right? Are you one of those individuals? Is it something that you put up on a shelf or is it a conversation you have and interact with ever so often in your mind? 
Yeah, I'm actually aware of that. And that's why I'm so passionate about doing what I have to do each and every single day and see how I can share and transmit my life values to my children. My life partner lost his mom. He was 19 years old. And he often talks about the fact that she instilled so many great values into his life that when you know, there was bad influence in his environment, then he would go away. Or if he was facing any type of challenges, then he would remind himself of what she was saying and how she dealt with it. And it was allowing him to go through those challenges in his life. Hmm. So I'm grateful that I'm still alive. And every day I feel like I have to do what I have to do. And then because if I go tomorrow, then at least I know that my kids, my partner will remember someone who was happy doing what she loved. And that for me is enough to say that, okay, whenever it's time to go, then it's time to go. There are so many things that happen with being the curious being when you share the earliest childhood memory of you looking at your grandmother sharpening the pencil with a razor blade. And then you went, of course, to do what granny was doing right and you cut yourself and I think that's such of a beautiful picture in understanding that yes there could be pain sometimes but when navigated properly that there's so much more that can come from it that there are people that can be inspired by your learning as well and that more so impact can occur would you say that's accurate yeah, it is. Absolutely. I like that comparison that you did there. Mm, Fabian, my friend, this has been such of a great pleasure. Before we leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? <laughs> well, what I want to share with them is actually if any of what I said inspires you, and if you want to know more, then you just have to go at FabianRaphael.com. Yeah, of course, we have that link there, right? Just in case you get mixed up with the I or the E or which one comes before, right? So we have that clickable right there in the show notes. Fabian Raphael, again, a pleasure I treasure. Thank you, my friend, for being on What is Inspired by 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. This podcast is produced by Pod Edits. Visit podedits.com for professional podcast publishing. 